Well, well, what has the cat dragged in today? It's a tutorial sequence on Unity. Now, this particular tutorial sequence is geared towards people who have never created anything in Unity before. If you have used Unity in some capacity to create something, it is very unlikely you will get very much from these videos. It is really geared towards people that just simply have not used Unity before. The only assumption that I make about your Unity knowledge is that you have a basic understanding of the editor, that you know the difference between the hierarchy, inspector, project, and console windows, that you can add objects to the hierarchy, and that you can manipulate things in the scene view. Those are my only assumptions, and even then, I'll still be talking through my actions as I go through and use these various windows. The other thing that we need to make sure on is our Unity version number. I am using Unity version 2021.1.6. The actions that I'm going to be taking in these videos work with a very wide range of Unity version numbers. But if you are using a Unity version number that is significantly beyond mine, for example, 2020 for the past, or perhaps in the future, 2022, uh, then you might see some minor window differences. But the operations that I'm taking are so basic that they pretty much work with any version of Unity. The final thing that we need to make sure is working just fine would be Visual Studio. Now, if you accepted all the defaults when you installed Unity through the hub, you should have Visual Studio installed and ready to go. An easy way of testing this is to come down to the Assets area in the Project window and right-click, or you could go to the Assets pull-down and select the Create menu from there. I generally do not use the File, the Assets or Game Objects windows to create things. I almost always use right-clicks but as a personal preference. So I'm going to right-click. I'm going to go to Create. And then I'm going to go to C-Sharp Script. So that's right-click, Create, C-Sharp Script. I'm just going to hit Enter to accept the default name of the script because I have no intentions of actually keeping this file around. And then you can double-click on the file to open up Visual Studio. Now, I use Visual Studio Professional. There is no functionality difference between professional and community. I mean, there are differences, but by the time you hit those differences, you are doing very, very advanced things with Visual Studio, most likely in a team setting. So they're not differences that you really need to worry about. Now, by default, unless I've changed it recently, Visual Studio loads up with the light theme and not the dark theme. I prefer to use the dark theme because I stare at a computer screen for so much every day that it's far less straining on my eyes. If you want to change your theme to dark, what you do is you go to Tools, you go to Options, And then it should default to being on General. And right over here, you will see Color Theme. By default, you get four of them, although you can install additional color themes if you want, but uh, that shall be left as an exercise to the viewer. Again, because it's not particularly obvious where it is, that's Tools, Options, General, Color Theme. And with that, I have verified that Visual Studio is loaded correctly and correctly linked with Unity. So I'm going to close Visual Studio. And then I am going to press the Delete key to delete that script because that was just there to 
test that Visual Studio was working correctly. If Visual Studio is not working correctly, trying to troubleshoot that is far beyond the scope of this video. The best thing that I can suggest there would be to hit up the Unity forums or maybe post a question in the comments to try to get some help on that. So that's all we need on setup. We're not going to import in any packages. We are going to do what's called gray boxing. We are going to use basic primitives for everything. And the project itself is going to be extremely simple. We are an intrepid uh, captain of a spaceship trying to fly, fly the way through an asteroid field. And that's it. We're, we're literally going to have a ship on the bottom of the screen, fly to the top of the screen, and dodge a couple of static asteroids. And as a bonus, we, we might make some of them uh, rotate if you want to go for the bonus video. And that's it. It's going to have a victory condition. You reach the top. It's going to have a lose condition. You run into an asteroid. And that's pretty much it. Very, very simple. Now, why would you want to do an extremely simple project like this over, say, some of the other tutorial sequences that you can find on YouTube or even through Unity's own website? Learning a tool like Unity is difficult. Unity is a very, very complex tool. It is best to learn that complex tool with a simple project. If I was going to go learn carpentry and learn how to use a drill and a table saw and all the other tools involved with carpentry, I wouldn't try to build a four-poster bed. I would try to build a box. Same, th same logic is being applied here. We're going to create an extremely simple project that is still a complete game, if an incredibly tiny one, so you can focus on learning the editor and learning the various bits and pieces of the Unity game engine and Unity logic that's needed to create a game. And we'll slowly ramp up the complexity of projects in other tutorial sequences. Okay, with that, let's wrap up this setup video with getting our project set up and our scene set up. And by project set up, I mean creating some basic folders. So I am going to create a folder called scripts because I am going to need it. Now, technically, uh, I normally go through and also create a bunch of other folders. I'll probably have a materials folder. I'll have a images folder. I will probably have a prefabs folder in here as well and other folders as projects demand. Do you have to sort your assets out into all of these different folders? No. Will your game still work if you fail to do this? Yes. Is it a, is it a very good idea to do this? Oh my, yes. As you get into more complex projects, organization is going to be key so that you don't lose track of things. Now for this project, the only folder that I'm going to use out of all of these is going to be the scripts folder and of course the scenes folder to save my scene in. That's it. I'm not going to be creating any materials. I'm not going to be importing in any images or anything else like that. But it's a very good idea to practice good organization even when you don't need it. So that's why it's just default behavior for when you do need it. So I've got my scripts folder created. Next, I'm going to create a new scene. I don't like working out of the sample scene. I am sure it's been fixed by now, but there was a version of Unity in which the sample scene had a really weird bug that could cause a whole host of issues. And so I just like starting from a blank fresh scene. 
So I'm going to hit Control N. Yank my scene window here off of my other monitor. The parallels of using dual monitors. Now this looks there's a lot on going on here you can ignore all of this this scene template is a very powerful tool once you have a more complex project but you can completely ignore it and just simply accept the default basic built-in scene and click on the create button there is nothing else that you need to do with that dialog other than hit the create button and that's going to get me the basic scene set up I'm going to have a main camera, I'm going to have a directional light, and that is it. And the button that I just clicked on, by the way, which is probably on by default if you are using Unity for the first time, is there's this little stack of looks like layers, and if you mouse over it, it says toggle, skybox, fog, and other various effects. I typically work with this off, and that's a setting that's saved across projects. But this is most likely what you see in your scene view, and this is what you should see in your game view. Now, I said this is going to be a space game. Last I checked, space doesn't look like this. It's pretty dark. Maybe, you know, a couple of pinpricks of light here and there. Of course, if we wanted to go with Hollywood space, it would be, like, colorful and filled with nebula and other stuff like that. No, we're just going to go for a black screen. So there's one mandatory thing that we have to change and one optional thing we have to change to get our scene set up for constructing your spaceship and putting your asteroids in and having it look like space. The mandatory step is I am going to select my main camera in the hierarchy. I'm going to come over to the inspector and I'm going to change the clear flags. This instructs the camera what it should reset to every frame. And so currently it's saying every frame, wipe all the video information and replace it with whatever the skybox happens to be. Instead, I am going to set the clear flag to solid color we can then see in the preview it changes to the blue and then I'm going to change the color by clicking on it to bring up the color picker here or the color wheel I should say and I will change the color to black zero 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 all the way down on the RGBA actually hold on why is my a at 255 that should not be correct okay so it should be 0, 0, 0,255. I am not entirely sure why the clear flag also had an alpha value set there. So I'm clearing it to solid black. Now, the optional step is to change the skybox setting. So that way you're not seeing it here. Now, you've got a couple of options. One, you could just simply turn off the skybox. Um, or you could remove the skybox from the environmental settings. To do that, we have to open up the lighting window. So I'm going to go to Window. I'm going to go to Rendering. And then I'm going to go to Lighting. Typically speaking, I will keep this window open and docked next to the hierarchy like this. It is an incredibly common window to access, and I just, just, it's just one of the windows that I always leave open. And to change the skybox, I go into the environment section, and there it is, skybox material. I'll click on the picker, the little circle with the dot, and I will set it to none. So I'm not actually using a skybox right now. You can either double click on none or click on none and then click on the X to close the window. I will double click. And now with no skybox, the editor window looks all gray and my game window is a solid black. 
And with that, we have everything set up to begin building things. So in the next video, we are going to put together our scene. We are going to build the spaceship and plonk down our asteroids, which will basically just be spheres. If you found this video useful, a thumbs up would be appreciated. And if it wasn't particularly all that uh, good or didn't learn much from it, well, the thumbs down button is right next to it. Until next time.